Welcome back, everybody. This is more Grand Tactician, the Civil War. And before we get into creating our patron units today, I just want to kind of give you a look ahead at where we'll be going with this game. Uh, I do not expect this campaign will last very long. I'm trying to slow it down to make it more interesting because I feel like at this point I could probably win it fairly easily. Um, maybe I'm speaking out of turn and I'm wrong about that, but I've got a pretty substantial manpower advantage in the field. So unless the union starts recruiting massively in the next month or so, I have a feeling I've just got too many men to, uh, for him to be able to overcome. Uh, that said, there is a patch about three, four, three or four days away still. Uh, that's what it's still estimating that could possibly fix some of that. I don't know. But the plan is if and when I do win this campaign. We're going to stick with the Confederates, but we're going to go to an 1862 campaign. I believe that'll be much more of a challenge. The Union will have a significant manpower advantage. He'll have a lot more men in the field, uh, which I think should allow for a much more challenging uh, game. And so basically then that also means that all the units that have already been chosen by patrons, we can keep those exact same units. We'll just have to get them into the game. And, and how I'll do that is uh, I'll basically... Um, if manpower is an issue, uh, I will start replacing the units in the existing armies in the 1862 campaign with those units. Uh, so if I have to you know, remove a few units to get the manpower to be able to create the new ones, we'll do that. Uh, and I think that should still create a pretty good situation. We'll get an opportunity to see all of these units in action. Um, but I think 1862 is going to create a great, greater challenge as the Confederates. Eventually, I think the 1861 campaign will be much better and give us much more of a challenge, but I just don't think the game's there yet. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, we do have some more patron units to get created, and thank you to every single one of you who has decided to support this channel in that way. Uh, I can't say that enough. Uh, this one here is going to be the Ruhr Valley Brigade. Uh, I can't talk this morning. It's early. Some Virginia or uh, some German boys here. Uh, so that one is for ROW Gunny. Uh, the Ruhr Valley Brigade, black shirts, white trousers. You have them there. They're going to be in uh, Buckner's Corps of the Army of Northern Virginia. All right, finally, we've got some good news for one that's been waited on for a while now. We're finally able to recruit a uh, cavalry unit from Kentucky, Morgan's Raiders. Let's get them a better weapon than shotguns, though. Uh, I think we've got, yeah, we do have the ability to produce Sharps carbines now. So that's, that's really good news, I think. No? There we go. Wouldn't let me click on it at first. Uh, so let's see how long it's going to take. It's only going to take three days, uh, and they're going to be a specialty unit with which we're going to try to just do some raiding up into Ohio, uh, try to follow what happened historically. Uh, that's an army unit. I don't know exactly where they're going to be formed. Looks like they may be forming in Louisville, which works for me. So about three days, we'll have them. Maybe we'll send them up into Indiana. It looks like a good spot to go. There is a there is a force up there that's not particularly powerful. We might be able to take them on. Oh, and by the way, we do have John Hunt Morgan available. I uh, sorted it by Kentucky and found him. We've got Breckenridge here, too, who was the vice president of the United States when uh, Lincoln was elected and uh, ended up surrendering Vicksburg to Grant later on in the war. Uh, so let's go ahead and assign John Hunt Morgan to Morgan's Raiders. Awesome. Pretty excited about that. Uh, so now he's been promoted to colonel. All right, we're going to be working on some more units here in just a minute, but we're going to go ahead and get Morgan's Ra Raiders moving. Uh, it shows up as Walker's Army, but it is basically just the one brigade. Uh, and I think I'm just looking to see where we want to send them because we do have the Army of Tennessee already in Illinois, uh, which I'm going to go ahead and send toward Indianapolis, the First Corps anyway. We haven't had a chance to get them into the action, so I want to definitely do that. So let's send Morgan over toward Cincinnati. This is kind of historically where he rode. I don't remember the exact route, but he entered in southwest Ohio, uh, kind of terrorized the whole southern part of Ohio, ended up up here near where I live. Uh, I live right around where the Department of Ohio currently is, and Morgan surrendered near Lisbon, Ohio, which is right about here. And I am going to be going down hopefully in the next week or two to do a video about that and show you some of the sites associated with his final battle, which was in Salineville, Ohio, uh, and then his surrender.
here's the front line situation. Uh, I was about to show you the front line situation, and now we have a, a combat situation instead. Once again, some fighting is going to break out near Pittsburgh. Uh, First Corps, 25th Army, only 5,000 men uh, up against what I believe is a, about 10, 12,000 men in the Second Corps, 14,000. Yeah, I don't think that's one we need to fight. We'll go ahead and auto resolve that. All right. Let's go ahead and zoom back out because I wanted to show you those front lines. So there's the front lines roughly as they exist. We're moving on Indianapolis. We've sent Morgan into southwest Ohio, which is why you see that region showing up as Confederate controlled at the moment. Glorious victory at Pittsburgh. Enemy suffered 1,900 casualties. We had 1,000. All right. Rebels on the move. Confederate armies invade the north. Northern citizens fearful. A disaster for the Union. But still, no movement on British intervention whatsoever. He is being more successful at the blockade. Cedar City, uh, Key, port blockade, 54%. Gosport, which is, I believe, Norfolk, 72%. All right, another one to get in here. This one is from a couple days ago, so I'm glad I'm finally able to get caught up with them. Uh, from Arkansas, the Fayetteville Light Infantry. And they're going to be in the Western Army, which is actually moving further and further east as we speak. So we're watching now as our forces are moving. I don't know why Morgan's Raiders stopped, but we're going to go ahead and get them moving again. Issue new orders. We've got the 1st Corps of the Army of Tennessee, which basically is the entire force, moving on Indianapolis, where I think we'll have some combat. Um, and just to let you guys know... Um, with all of those units that have been created, when I do a new campaign, I'm not going to make you watch me create every one of those patron units again. What I'll do is um, I'll, I'll give an overview just so everybody knows what army, what division, what core they're in. I'll create all of them uh, in that new campaign, and you'll just kind of see all of them. Uh, and then as new folks join in, I'll probably highlight them. But uh, it won't be like this every single time. All right, let's see if we've get, we're going to get a combat situation here in Indianapolis. I don't know how many men are in this first corps that we're going to be facing. Oh, he's only got 1,900 men. There's another first corps over here that's got... Oh, that's the one. He moved. See, when these are question marks like that, you don't actually know for sure that that's where they are. That's just your, your last known position. So they just decided to give up Indianapolis because they didn't have the manpower to hold it. Interesting. Where's Morgan? Because he's going to have his hands full in Ohio. There's a lot, a lot of manpower moving this direction. The Department of Pennsylvania, 3,700 men. 31st Army, 16,000 men. Department of the Ohio, 2,000 men. Uh, there's an army here, 4,000 men. So this could get interesting. All right, this is just Morgan's Raiders. This is going to be interesting. The 25th Army in contact with Walker's Army. Uh, I don't know how many men he's got. Let's see. 4,200. Let's do this. So this gives us a chance to talk a little bit about Morgan's Raid. Uh, it actually started uh, in central Kentucky. They went into south-central Indiana, went up uh, through towns like Salem, Vi uh, Vienna, or Vienna, I don't know. Here in Ohio, we have a Vienna. Oh, he didn't even fight me. Okay. Well, so much for that. That's the first time I've had that happen. Um, entered uh, right near Cincinnati into Ohio, rode over to Buffington Island, fought a battle there where I think one of the McCook family was killed, maybe two of them, uh, which is right uh, down around, I think probably not far from Marietta, Ohio. Um, and then they went up to Nelsonville, rode past near Zanesville, went into Steubenville, and then up eventually to Selineville, where I was showing you earlier. This was all going on about the same time that the Gettysburg campaign was going on over in uh, Virginia, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. Uh, it ended July 26, 1863 with Morgan's surrender. He had about 2,500 men, so pretty comparable to what we're taking in on our raid. Um, and the Union actually dedicated about 40,000 men to hunting him down and protecting against that raid. Okay, so um, Morgan's raid just drove off that Union force without a fight. Does this mean they're going to be able to take uh, take Columbus? Because that would be kind of interesting, because Morgan, when he surrendered, 
ended up being confined at the Ohio State Penitentiary um, and then escaped. So that might be something I might have to visit sometime is the uh, site of the Ohio State Penitentiary and talk a little bit about Morgan's escape as well. I live about two to three hours from there. All right, we've got enough Alabama boys here to be able to get this next unit in here. It's going to be the 4th Alabama Infantry. Um, black jackets, blue. Oh, that's a bright blue. I don't know about that. Yeah, we'll go with that. He didn't specify what kind of blue. I hope that's okay. So this is going to be the 4th Alabama Infantry Brigade. They're going to be in the Army of Tennessee. Under Albert Sidney Johnson, they'll be part of Davidson's division. All right, this might get a lot more interesting here in a minute. The Department of Pennsylvania is moving in on Columbus, which we have just taken. Uh, so Morgan's Raiders have taken Columbus, but they're about to face off uh, against a pretty substantial force, uh, I believe with about 7,000 men. So we're going to be outnumbered about 3 to 1. I'm hoping we can uh, get a perk out of this and give them that uh, bushwhacker perk, I think, is what we want to go with. But we're about to face off against some pretty big numbers there. Can someone say Chicago? Because that's where we're headed. We're going to start sending the Western Army up towards Chicago. First Ar uh, Corps Army of Northern Virginia is up against the First Corps of the 29th Army. I don't know why he keeps creating all these armies. How many men do they have? They've got 15,000 men. And we've got... I don't think we've got that many. 16,000. Okay. Let's do it. So once again, we're fighting on the Antietam battlefield. I'm going to have to move this core so we can fight somewhere else. Because we fought so many battles in that part of Maryland that we just keep fighting on this exact same battlefield. For those of you who are new to the channel or new to the game, they are going to be adding more battlefields, uh, more maps. So This is interesting. The way they're drawing these squares looks a little different than I'm used to. Uh, maybe not. It's just the way the terrain is, I guess. And we're going to put Stewart's Division right there. It's just after midnight. It's about 1 in the morning now. But I think he's coming from this direction. Over here near Shepherdstown. So I'm expecting him to come down the Shepherdstown Pike toward, in, uh, toward uh, Sharpsburg. Well, I was right about that. What I was wrong about was how quickly he'd get there. He's already in position, and so McClaws, this is the Junalist Gazuovs, who know this battlefield well, uh, are going to have to get into combat right there. So let's go ahead and bring up... No, you don't need to go up that way, guys. We're going to go ahead and bring up Jones right next to him, and we're just going to have to file everybody in on a battle line right here. But this is where it begins. But Junalist Gazuovs, probably the most experience unit in the entire Confederate Army. These are just skirmishers we're facing right now. All right, who we got coming up behind here? We got Ringo's Riders, Pickett. I think what we'll do is let's bring Pickett way out here somewhere. No, I don't want you to go through there. See, that's the problem. I gave them orders way out in front. Of where they are currently headed. Alright, let's bring Pickett over here then. No, I don't want you to ride through there. Now, you know what the problem is, I think, is that I'm basically telling them to take roads. So if we tell them not to take the roads, no, that doesn't seem to matter. All right. Pendleton's artillery. No, I don't need you to go up there either.
need some way of more easily overriding previous orders when you make contact with the enemy. So they don't go riding up right into his lines like that. Having a really hard time getting the Irish volunteers to get where I want them. There they go. There's more men coming down that line. Yeah, see, like right here. Oh, that drives me nuts. I don't need Rockbridge artillery riding into the enemy lines like that. And now they're in a melee situation. They're going to be in trouble. I guess I need to, to issue shorter orders. Because what happened was I issued orders from all the way back here for them to put a battle line right here. And all of them were still trying to follow those orders. Even though I had long since made contact with the enemy short of that position. Alright, let's get... I guess let's get Stewart's division up here then. bring Pickett over here. We've still got infantry coming down the line. Oregon Volunteers. What division is that? That's Anderson's division. Who actually has orders to come up right here. Pendleton's artillery is just going to fire while they can here. Going to take some losses. Get up there. I'm not sure what our infantry is waiting on right now. Rockbridge artillery is like, come on guys, help me out here. Nobody's moving. I mean, I get that it's 2.30 in the morning and nobody feels like fighting right now. There goes Jones. We'll get McClaws in there soon, too. Let's look at the situation so far with casualties. Oh, he's doing okay. He has less, uh, fewer men than we were told he would have, so I don't know if he's getting reinforcements or what. We'll go ahead and speed things up. Now what are the Irish volunteers doing? No, I want you right there. Where's... This is a mess. This is an absolute mess. Pickett just went up right in front of the artillery. He's about to get Lightning Brigade 2, it looks like. There we go. Alright, now dismount. That Lightning Brigade perk actually makes it more efficient for him to fight on foot. Where's my other division? They're still getting in position. Same with the artillery. All right, if he's only got 9,000 men, this should go pretty easy.
Come on, fire. Alright, we're going to go ahead and bring Anderson's division around now. Carly and guard. Super duper stormtroopers. And where's his third brigade? Alright, that's it. Alright, another new unit. The 34th Light Foot. That's going to go into uh, Evan's division here in the Army of Tennessee, which I really hope we get a chance to see in action at some point. We have not yet fought a single battle with the Army of Tennessee, which has got 27,000 men. He just hasn't had anybody to fight me. One of the reasons why I want to get into an 1862 campaign, because then we know not only does the Union have over 200,000 men in the field, whereas right now they've got about 100,000, uh, but we know they've got substantial armies in the West under Grant uh, that will give us an opportunity to fight on all fronts in a proper way. All right, we're going to build a fort here right on the Scioto River. Uh, it should be the Scioto River, heading south out of Columbus. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, so we can hold Columbus, but I want to get Walker's Army. That's Morgan's Raiders. I want to get them out of here and start sending them east on the historic raid that they were on. Uh, we've still got Buckner sitting tight in Pittsburgh, just trying to hold that. I don't know what these other troops are going to be doing. But there's a substantial force coming his way. He's taking Cincinnati back from us, so we're going to have to... I don't think we're going to worry about holding Indianapolis. Let's send the 1st Corps Army of Tennessee over towards Cincinnati. I think I've got enough troops over here to worry about the Western Theater because he doesn't have a lot of men out this way. We've got 11,000 men in the Western Army headed for Chicago. So we're going to shift further and further east with all of our troops. Uh, the Army of Tennessee is really just a... A headquarters. It does have a perk available to it. We'll give it telegraph, field telegraph. Uh, the men themselves are actually in the first core. Probably would have been, might be easier for me to just transfer everything over directly to Army of Tennessee control instead of having a core. Would make more sense. So all I need to do in order to do that is drag these divisions up to this little arrow. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't always work exactly the way you want it to. But you drag them and then they show directly under control of the army commander rather than under a core. There we go. Well then, the campaign is won. Close this panel to review the statistics. The war is over. Union sues for peace. Confederate armies triumphant. I guess it's because I took Harrisburg. I was about to show you that I was sending an army into Harrisburg. But there you go. Oh, I didn't even get to see kind of the closing things that happened there, did I? There was a map of some kind that was going to show some stuff. But let's just look at the, I guess, look at the statistics and see what happened. It has national morale dropped to 24. That would do it. It has to drop under 25 to win. So, all right. Well, you know what that means. And I apologize to the couple of you whose men never got uh, into the uh, fight, nor did we even see them uh, for the most part. Uh, but as promised, we're going to go ahead and start up an 1862 campaign. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for that next patch, which is about three days away. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to work on a couple tutorial videos for you all uh, to let you see a lot of you have been asking questions, so if you have a particular thing you'd like me to cover in a tutorial video, and I'll probably do a few of them, um, let me know. Use the comment section below. Let me know what you want to see me cover in the tutorial. Remember that some of the stuff that we're talking about, like especially with the, the finances and the economy, isn't totally fleshed out yet. Um, but we'll be back probably in about three days with the start of an 1862 campaign, and every single one of those patron units, uh, we're going to get them... Uh, right back into the action. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by putting in the units that either didn't get to face any combat 
uh, or I, there were a couple of them, uh, DK's Cowboys and the Men of Ruin, um, who didn't even I didn't even have a chance to add before the campaign ended here. So um, we'll get them in first. And uh, the ones that saw a lot of action in this campaign will also get in, but we'll put them in last um, just to make sure that everybody's getting a chance to see their men in action. So we'll get them all going again. Um, hopefully we'll see a much more competitive campaign with 1862 and with the next patch. This game is eventually going to be very, very good. It just has some work yet, and it's a little too easy right now. Uh, and we're going to max out everything for the Union on that 1862 campaign, make it as hard as we possibly can. So let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. We'll see you again in a couple days. Thanks again to everybody who supports this channel, whether it's through Patreon, through commenting, liking, subscribing. Every one of you matters. I read every single comment, even if I don't reply to all of them. I read everything over on Discord, even if I'm not there every single minute of every day. But I love this community. I love that you're all a part of it. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.